Hi everybody, I'm really excited. This is Mr. Jacobson, your history teacher. And I'm really excited because this is the first time we're going to be doing a webcast together. So a lot of really exciting things to talk about. Just for people who haven't uh, done this before with a teacher. So basically I'm going to go through some slides that talk about the next information that I, I want you to know for the this following week and all you need to do is just watch it absorb the information and then you'll be required to give a one-page summary on all the information that will be presented and plus trust me there'll be plenty of information to write about I assure you <coughs> so just sit back and enjoy absorb the information and uh, and then we'll discuss it more on Monday coming up so first we're going to talk about the Zhou Dynasty. They're the next dynasty after the Shang. And the Shang Dynasty was defeated. And let me tell you why. The nobles and the very wealthy people of that dynasty, they started treating the peasants really bad. The peasants got pretty upset and they revolted against them. The Zhou were part of the people who revolted against them. And eventually the, the Zhou Dynasty was what came after the Shang or Shang dynasty. So the Zhou dynasty is going to be the longest lasting dynasty in Chinese history. It's going to end around 400 BC. So here's a little comparison here. <coughs> here's the Shang dynasty and here's the Zhou dynasty. So you can see the Zhou dynasty is, it's uh, I'd say it's significantly bigger for sure. Uh, definitely covering more land especially to the east part of uh, or west part of China and also to the east over here as well so one big thing that the Zhou had they believed in something called the mandate of heaven and that's the belief that heaven gave power to the king so the Zhou claimed that the mandate of heaven to rebel against the Shang this justified their fighting against the emperor so with the idea of the mandate of heaven believing that you were kind of chosen by the heavenly powers to be the, the next emperor, it justified the Zhou in overthrowing the Shang emperor, saying that basically God has forsaken them because the Shang emperor forsook the people and God has now chosen the Zhou to rule in that place. And uh, the mandate of heaven will be a way which people will look at the emperor of China. They won't see the emperor of China as divine or as a god, but they will see him as someone that was chosen by God. So the Zhou political system, uh, the Zhou granted a, a land to lords in, uh, in return for loyalty, military support. So... During the Zhou dynasty, the, the nobles and the emperor are going to get really close. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the Shang dynasty, which is kind of ironic. The Shang dynasty was overthrown by the Zhou dynasty, but yet a lot of how the Zhou ran their kingdom was how the Shang did as well. Anyway, the it's, political system is quite simple. You have the king, you have lords and warriors, and then you have peasants. Now the lords paid taxes and provided soldiers as the king needed them. So again, the lords and the kings working together. Each peasant family received a small plot of land to farm from the government, but also had to farm noble lands as well. So, I mean, imagine if you're a farmer in China and you're given a plot of land, you might be thankful for that, <coughs> but you're also told that you also have to farm the Lord's land or the governor's land or, you know, someone else's land who's your superior. So you have to spend six, seven, eight hours on your land and then spend another three, four hours on the other person's land. How would that make you feel? Well, you might look a little bit like Flappy here, <laughs> who's a farmer, and he doesn't look too happy with the news he heard. So great inventions coming out during the Zhou Dynasty. Uh, the Zhou Dynasty developed irrigation and flood controls. This allowed farmers to grow more crops. And then in 550 BC, the Chinese were using what, what is now the iron plow. Now this plow is much more sturdier than the wood plow was. And because it was iron, it was able to, um, to, uh, to 
cut through harder ground and so therefore the Chinese could uh, could farm more land uh, and produce more crops because the iron plow was able to break through harder ground which the wood plow would just snap and break if it tried to so here we have uh, just a little a little uh, comparison here this is the iron plow and this here is where the 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 uh, the portion would dig into the dirt and would would break up the earth right here so it's made of iron iron is much more stronger than wood I don't have to tell you that and here is the wood plow and so when wood goes into the ground and that was this was used in in um, this was used in Egypt and for good reason Egypt had the Nile River and along the Nile it, the soil was soft but as you get further away from a river you need an iron plow to really be able to pull up that dirt and, and to, and to uh, be able to plant <clears throat> so the Zhou, the Zhou system brought order to China ruling through lords helped the Zhou to control distant areas and China ensure loyalty to the king. So allow me to explain. So all these little colors and and provinces here, the king would say, look, oh noble or lord or hey rich dude, okay, I'll give you this huge plot of land and you will govern it and all you need to do is just pay me taxes and give me people to, to fight in my army. And so that's how the lords and the king or the emperor uh, work together and it was a good way but eventually the lords began taking too much power and they would stop paying taxes to the king they'd stop sending as many soldiers over to the king and eventually the whole thing just went to put now as loyalty to the Zhao to the Zhou uh, king lessened many refused to fight in 771, invaders came and won the capital, but the dynasty survived. So the Zhou got invaded here, but the and, and they took the capital, but the, the dynasty kept surviving. After the defeat, the lords began fighting with each other. By 481 BC, China entered an era called the Warring States Period. Soldiers fought for land instead of honor. <coughs> the decline of the Zhou changed the family structure. Previously, the family was the foundation of life in China, but now families began fighting each other for power. This happened because China did not have a strong government anymore. And the warring states, as we see here, so around 403, the Zhou dynasty lost power and could not keep order. Nobles began fighting each other. This is known as the warring states period. Peasants were forced by nobles to fight in wars. There were little law and order. So, as you can see here, each color on this map describes a noble's land. And uh, you have plenty here. This here, the Chin area, this is going to become the next, because they're fighting each other. So this, 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 uh, this uh, family, the Chin, they will eventually conquer all this and unify China once again so somebody will win but the warring states period it's not a good period to live in any country that's warring because there's just no law and order and people are dying right and left because war is going on constantly and the saddest thing about it is you're fighting against your own you're fighting against other Chinese people it's not even against another nation <laughs> we're going to talk about Confucianism so in Confucius's life there were many thinkers who tried to think ways to restore China now Confucius felt that China was overrun by rude and dishonest people he was probably right he wanted China to return to ethics morals and values his teachings are called Confucianism now people needed to know their place in society that was one of the first things he wanted people if you have a place in society you need to know what it is and you need to do it well so fathers should be good examples for their family children should honor their parents family me members should be loyal to each other 
He traveled throughout China and became a respected teacher. His ideas were, were collected in a book called The Analects. The, uh, Confucius believed that when people behaved well, they made heaven happy. Now we're going to go over to another uh, philosophy slash religion in China called Taoism. So Taoism means the way. Taoism teaches that a human must live in harmony with the Tao, the guiding force of all reality. The Tao gave and created the universe and all things in it. Taoism developed as a reaction to Confucianism. Taoists did not agree with the idea that active, involved leaders brought social harmony. Tao believed that the governments should stay out of people's lives. So Taoists believed that, uh, you know, we need to trust people and teach people. And, uh, and government needs, needs to stop telling people what to do all the time. Confucius, he was okay with government as long as the leaders of that government were honest and, and noble individuals. And as long as people accepted their place in society and did their best in that place. So the Taoists believe that people should avoid interfering with nature. Taoists believe that the universe is a balance of opposites. They also believe that humans are just a part of nature and not better than any other thing. So you see a lot of Jainism in this uh, philosophy as well. And if you look over here, Taoism is where the whole concept of the yin and yang come from. The yin and yang represent opposites and how they attract each other and how, how the world has to I can't function without those opposites. So here you have autumn, and the opposite of autumn is spring. Here you have summer, the opposite of summer would be winter, and so on and so on. So it's this idea that uh, opposites do attract and that nothing can really serve or function well unless there's that opposite, oppos the opposing force. So this is pronounced Lao Tzu. So Lao Tzu means old baby. He's the most famous Taoist. He taught the people should not try to get rich or seek power. He wrote the handbook for being a Taoist called The Way and Its Power. And this is a shrine memorial to him in, in deep in China. And our last uh, philosophy slash religion we're going to talk about, this is definitely a philosophy. It's called legalism. And legalism is the strict adherence or the principle of strict adherence to law or prescription especially to the letter rather than the spirit so what is legalism it's the belief that people were bad in nature and needed to be controlled that people are naturally evil and that if you don't have laws and punishments um enforced to to deter people from uh from acting on their evil uh thoughts and desires then you're going to have a bad society so legalism is a political uh, philosophy without any religious concerns, has nothing to do with religion. Legalism focus on government and social control. So legalists did not like the moral preachings of Confucius. In fact, moral anything isn't really important to legal. The only thing legalists want are conformity to the laws. They also did not like Taoism because it didn't stress respect for authority. Legalists believed that society needed strict laws to keep people in line and that punishments should fit the crime. So the bigger the breaking of the law, the bigger the punishment. So how legalism worked? Unity and efficiency were important. Legalists wanted to appoint government officials rather than nobles to rule China. Legalists wanted China to expand and was always prepared for war. Legalist was the first to put their practices into China. And here we have a little picture at the end here. It says uh, we have these people who are obviously at work. And they say, go ahead, break the rules, make my day. And uh, it's not a job, it's a way of life. So you might know people in your life that uh, are legalists by, by in nature. And some people like this. They like the idea that there are laws 
and that there are um, there's order and that uh, and they accept that if those laws are broken then the punishment is th that is severe is okay so anyway so that's the uh, that's it for our webcast today I thank you for uh, for paying attention please remember to write a one-page summary typed and I'll give you more information tomorrow Friday uh, on that and uh, I look forward to our discussion on Monday so until then take care and have a uh, have a good day bye bye